So hi, this is Lou, welcome to my channel. And today's video is going to be another watercolour one. And this time I'm talking about masking. So there's a few different ways you can mask off your paper and preserve the lights uh, when you're painting with watercolour. And uh, in particular today, I'm going to be looking at the masking pen that I've got and I'm going to be painting a pattern. I'm going to be drawing a pattern with that pen, painting over the top of it and then removing the masking fluid, uh, which is just, this is great fun. Um, so I really recommend this one if you uh, if you want to have a play with masking fluid. This is a great one to kind of get started with and I love the results of this one. So I've got some washi tape and some masking tape. So you can use those for straight lines. Washi tape comes in lots of different sizes, so you can get some really thin stuff if you want to kind of create little window pane lines or interesting things like that. So here I've got some masking fluid in a pen. So this is a marker pen that's full of masking fluid, which is like this rubbery stuff. And you, uh, you apply it to the paper, and then when it's dry, you paint over the top of it. And then it peels away, so it, uh, it's quite fun to, to remove actually. What you normally get is a bottle of it and then you apply it with a brush. You want to use a really old paintbrush or one that you're not particularly bothered about because it gets very sticky and gummy and it's very hard to get out of the bristles. And then I've no idea whether this is going to work or not, but I've got a white pencil. So I'm going to try this, which I haven't done since school, which is drawing with a white crayon or a uh, pencil or something kind of waxy and seeing if that uh, repels the paint. So I'm going to give this a go. But yeah, I'll let you see what the results are because I'm not quite sure yet what they're going to be. So first of all, the tape. So you can just use tape and put strips of it down. You can rip it up into interesting shapes. Um, I think I'm going to tear this one. So I'm going to tear it down the middle and supply it here and tear it again. See if I can get myself some interesting shapes that way. There we go. So this is regular masking tape and this is washi tape. And let's just put a strip of this down. I find this to be good because it's not very sticky. So while it's not very good for holding things down, it's actually quite good for this because um, it sticks to the paper, but then it comes up nice and easily without tearing the paper. Now I'm going to use the pen. Let's see, I've got a bit of scrap paper. So you give it a shake and you press the end down until the, uh, not ink is it, but yeah, the masking fluid starts to run down the nib. And then I can, draw whatever I like with this. So let's just do like a loopy pattern. Maybe some dots. One of the things about the pen is it gives you a really regular line, which can be uh, can be what you want, but if it if you want something a little bit more fluid and a little bit more, I don't know, artistic, uh, then I'd say the, the fluid is the way to go. But if you want like a really straight, regular, predictable line, then this is good. And now I'm going to have a go with the pencil. And again, I've no idea whether this is going to do anything or not, but I thought it would be interesting to try. So right, so all I'm going to do is leave the masking fluid to be completely dry and then I'm going to go over the whole thing with some colour and then see what we've got. Okay, so this is dry now. It really didn't take very long. Kind of, I maybe left it for about 30 seconds to a minute, something like that. While it was drying, I've mixed up some of this lovely Prussian blue and I'm just going to put a wash of this all over. I'm just going to make sure that all of the little edges of my taper stuck down. And then let's go in. I'll be interested to know whether the tape leaks. 
so whether you get ink underneath the edges of the tape. I've had that happen a few times. And this is it going over the colour pencil. And you can see something happening, look. Maybe not very obvious, but there is something going on there. Right, I'm going to leave this to dry completely and then I'm going to remove all of my masked areas. So my paper is all dry now, so let's take the tape off and the masking fluid and see what we've got left. So that has come out really nicely and cleanly, that was the washi tape. And then this is the regular masking tape that I tore into irregular strips. And that's coming out nice and cleanly too. So there are some slightly darker areas around the edges of those bits that are um, that were where the like the little hairy bits were where I tore the tape. That's interesting. Now getting rid of the masking fluid, you can use your finger. Um, you want to make sure it's nice and clean because it's really easy to get this kind of grubby. But if you're doing a big area, it can start to hurt after a while and you you can use uh, an eraser instead. Um, so I normally use a soft putty eraser uh, when I'm using watercolour, but I found that this really didn't work very well for removing the masking fluid, so it's a slightly more structured one I found to be a bit better. There we go. There's a few little bits left on there. There we are. And then this bit at the bottom is where I put the uh, the pencil. So this I think is, is resisting more than masking because it's um, it's putting something on the paper that resists the the watercolor because um, it's uh, I can't remember if it's oil or wax based pencil, but the Caran d'Ache Luminance pencil. This wouldn't work with a watercolor pencil, so um, you you wouldn't be able to get any results with that. It's very subtle, but there's something there. Now I'm going to move on and do a project, and for this I'm going to use the masking pen. I'm going to do a pattern of scallops all over the page and uh, with this, and then I'm going to paint watercolours over the top. So for my scallop pattern I want some guidelines, and um, I'm going to freehand mine, but if you think it would be better to draw a pencil guideline first, then, uh, then you go ahead and do that. What I'm doing is I've taped my paper down to the table, but then I'm going to go around it and add in some little marks around the edge. So I've done them in white so you can see them against the blue. And these are just going to give me some visual guides as I'm freehanding my scallops to make sure that I get them the right height. So I've made them five centimetres apart um, at the bottom and the top of the page. And then see what do I need at the sides. I need two and a half centimetres there. Two and a half cent. yeah let's just do every two and a half centimetres. There we go and then do the same on the other side. And then I'm going to start at the bottom and draw half circles. So I start at the bottom left hand corner and draw a half circle and I want the height of the half circle to come up to this line here where my first two and a half centimetres is. So that's where the top of that circle will be. And then I want each one to come down and meet the bottom of the page at one of these points. Half circle up to there, back down to that point. Half circle up to there, back down to that point. I've got a little bit of rogue stuff on the end of my pen. There we go. And they're not terribly neat but that's okay because I quite like like a handmade look. So I want you know to there to be some structure but I, I don't mind if they're kind of a little bit wonky. Right now I can start at the edge at this uh, at this little point, come in and I can draw like my quarter of a circle. 
down to there. And what you can do if you find it helpful is just put your ruler across the page so that you know how high to make them. And then your half circles go from the top of one half circle below to the top of the next one. And the next one. And the next one. And now I simply continue that all the way up the page. So this is my whole page and I'm really happy with how this is looking, but I want to add a little bit extra. So I'm just going to go and add a couple of little, um, yeah, little stripes into each one. So like making it look like a rainbow, something like this. And then with the second row, those stripes go all the way down to the, into the little V shape there. And you'll know that ideally, it's better to draw top to the bottom of a page because I'm in danger of smudging this with my hand. But I like drawing this pattern from the bottom up. So I don't know, it's just, my preference, the way I like doing it. You could of course do it from the top down, but I just always think of it this way up. So if you were doing a traditional watercolour painting, you start with your lightest colours and you work from light to dark adding in the darker colours and layering colours over the top of one another. So in that case, you can use masking fluid like this to preserve the highlights, so the bits that are the lightest in your painting. So if you've got some like spots where the sun's really shining brightly or something like that, then that's what you'd use the masking fluid for, is to preserve those and then paint around them and then remove them at the end of the painting. There we go, there's our page full of scallops. And I'm gonna wait for this to dry, make sure it's all completely dry, and then I'm going to start painting. So now my masking fluid's all dry, I'm gonna go and paint over the top of it. And I'm just gonna use a variety of different greens and blues. So I'm gonna paint some green in there and then just dip my brush into the blue and blend that in. Let's go in with a blue one for this next one. And I'm just going to um, switch between the different colours that I'm using. So mix that with a little bit of warmer blue on the edge. I can go in with a new colour on here. And look, it's bleeding a little bit into the green, but that's okay.
so for the colours in this painting I'm using a mixture of Prussian blue, ultramarine blue, viridian green and lemon yellow and I'm just mixing them all fairly randomly um, to get, try and get some warmer and cooler blues and then all the way to almost yellow uh, but keeping it in that kind of sea green palette but you can use any colours you like for this Right, so now my whole page is covered and it's dry and I'm going to go in and just add a little bit of extra, extra something and uh, yeah, using the same colours. So when your paint is dry you can go in and remove the, uh, the masking fluid and this is the fun bit. So see as you rub over the surface you start to reveal the pattern.
so it can take a little bit of time to get all of the masking fluid off especially if you're using kind of quite textured paper because I have found in the few times that I've used it that it can kind of get stuck in the the low bits of the, uh, the texture and it may look like I was pressing quite hard but I actually wasn't putting very much uh, pressure on the surface of the paper because it's quite easy to damage it. So here we go, here is our scallop pattern done with the masking fluid and I find these really great fun. They're, um, they're really nice to do. Um, I love kind of blending all of those colours together and then add in some of these details over the top. I think it just, just adds something to it. Thanks very much for watching today. I really hope that you've enjoyed this. This is a really fun one. Uh, if you give it a go, I'd love to see your results. Uh, you can post them on Instagram and tag me at Lou Rachel Davis. Uh, thank you for sharing all of your work with me so far. I really do love to see it. And if you like this video, then uh, please give it a thumbs up and uh, do subscribe to see more videos from me. Thanks very much for watching again. Bye bye.